breast milk fortification, who is the target? Those are preterm infants, small for gestational age infants, but what is the weight below which you are recommending uh, fortification? Mm -hmm. well, we fortify based on gestational age. So all babies less than 32 weeks gestation, we would fortify human milk until they're due to go home. So while they're with us in the preterm period. And if the baby is uh, an SGA baby, what does, the, uh, what does it mean? Uh, the baby then would be older than 32 weeks well, in and you would still fortify? Uh, in our practice we, we would fortify SGA if they were less than 34 weeks, So, but older than that, even the SGA infant isn't with us that long in hospital. So if they were very SGA, you know, 1.5, 1.6 kilos, we probably would fortify. But in general we do it on uh, gestational age. We would not fortify a term SGA infant. You have a milk bank, a big milk bank in Perth, uh, so you can manage easily. Um, where from are the donors coming? Um, they, they find us. We've never advertised. There is a strong breastfeeding support group in the community, um, and I think by word of mouth they find us. Then a lot of the mothers who have preterm babies, they're all trying to express and some get a lot of milk and others don't despite good efforts. So a lot of the mums of preterm infants who are expressing more than their babies require will donate as well. So at least half the mothers are mothers of preterm babies. This is all for free? It's you get all for free. All yeah. the breast milk for free? It's all for free. Uh, I great. think it's quite a community s spirit and the mothers like to do it. Now, how long are you fortifying breast milk? Uh, at until which weight? Yeah, again, we if we fortify less than 32 weeks, we fortify until they're about due to go home, which is about 35 or 36 weeks. We naturally wean the fortification as the babies go to the breast, and obviously then they have an unfortified breast feed. At home, it's not possible to do. To yeah. uh, it's possible, but we don't fortify at home. We would like our babies to be fully breastfed, but in reality, many of the mums are, are doing some breastfeeds and are still pumping and feeding breast milk in a bottle, but we don't fortify that breast milk after discharge. What is the percentage of uh, infants receiving breast milk in your unit? Well, at the beginning, it's about 95%. But by the time they go home, it's about 65% of the very preterm babies. So we provide the donor milk as a supplement to mum's own milk, if their supply is low, until 34 weeks. After that, they get mum's own milk or preterm formula. And when they go home, they get mum's own milk or a term formula. And the outcome, you have shown us a lot of data on the positive outcome of this system, is yeah. satisfactory? It, it, it is. We still get growth. Cautious about the safety of increasing the fortification too high. We're very cautious about forcing catch-up growth. So our aim is to prevent the babies falling off centiles. But for some babies, particularly the SGA infant, if you're born lean, it might be better to stay lean. So we, we are cautious about catch-up growth. But as we have said, the brain is more important than perhaps later adiposity. So you're looking at the brain first, you don't let them fall off. Yeah, we're looking at the brain first, but we're very concerned about later adiposity and, and we are actively researching and trying to collect more data about the effect on their long-term health. So it's only just now the very preterm infants are living until their 40s or 50s and, and you know we can't ignore that we might be having a deleterious impact on their long-term health. So we do have to look at both sides. That's correct. Uh, this all has to do probably with programming. 
as we call it now, that uh, our genes are programmed in the right or wrong way. And if the genes are programmed the wrong way, you can have brain dysfunction. On the other hand, if the genes are programmed the wrong way, you can't also have adiposity later in life. This is what you fear and what you are searching. Correct. Yeah. yeah. When will we have an answer on that? Well, the first principle is to do no harm. So with our interventions, if we're not certain, I think we should be doing it in a, in a, in a trial or at least in a situation where we're collecting ongoing data and reporting that and contributing to, you know, to the world knowledge. This needs probably a multi-centre, big clinical Absolute, trials. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. My pleasure.